Read Bar Graphs, Lesson 10.3. Now we talked about picture graphs in Lesson 10.1 and 10.2, and if you haven't seen those videos, it might be a good idea for you to watch them first. And there's a link in this description so you can just click on it. We can read a bar graph to find the number that it shows. In a bar graph, each bar shows information. There's a number line scale on the side. We can compare the lengths of each bar, and we can see the number each bar matches with the scale on the side. Here we have a bar graph, and it's titled, Books Read This Month. Emma read some books, and Lisa read some books. We can find out how many they read by following the bar. We follow the bar for Emma, and we move our finger down and our eyes down and see that it is at the four. So Emma read four books. Lisa read five books. And bar scales can go across, which is horizontal, like this one, and they can go up. That's vertical, like this one. So here's the same information, but it's in a vertical bar graph. Emma read four books. Lisa read five books. And the parts of a bar graph are the title, this is books read, the bar labels that tells us the name of each bar. There's a scale, and they're all different. This one goes from zero to six. They're evenly spaced. And this is the scale label. It's the number of books. So the name of this bar graph is books read. That's its title. So each bar graph has a title that tells us what the bar graph is about. Each bar on the graph has a bar label that tells us the name for that bar. There's a scale to tell us how many were counted. And there's a scale label that tells us what we're counting. We're counting the number of books. We can use the bar graph to answer the questions. Here's a bar graph showing pancakes eaten. We can see the scale goes from 0 to 8, and the scale label says number of pancakes. We can see the bar labels Bob, Dave, and Jim, so that's each person and how many pancakes they ate. It's very easy to look at this and tell who ate the most, isn't it? We can see Jim's bar is the tallest, so he ate the most. Bob ate blank pancakes. We look at Bob's bar, we follow it up to the scale, and see he ate four. Bob ate four pancakes. Dave ate. We look at Dave and see that it goes to three. That's where his bar stops. So he ate three. Jim ate blank pancakes. We follow Jim's bar all the way up. We move across to see where on the scale it is. It's at a six. He ate six pancakes. Blank ate the least number of pancakes. We can easily look at the bar graph and see which has the shortest bar. Dave does, so he ate the least amount. He only ate three. So the answer is Dave. Dave ate the least number of pancakes. Blank pancakes were eaten in all. We take the number of pancakes eaten, we can use the numbers we used, or we can use the scale on the side. There was a 4, a 3, and a 6 that were eaten. Because it says in all, we know it's going to be addition. We need to add a 4, a 3, plus a 6, and that'll tell us how many were eaten in all. And we know this is going to be is equal to. We're adding three add-ins. Do you see the two compatible numbers that we can add first? We can add the four and the six together because they make a 10. Then we can add the three, 10, 11, 12, 13. How many pancakes were eaten in all? 13.
It's very easy to see who ate the least and the most by just looking at the bar, isn't it? This is the same information we used for the picture graphs. This is favorite ice cream flavors. We've got vanilla, chocolate, strawberry, and cookies and cream. These are our bar labels. This bar is for vanilla, this one's for chocolate, this one's for strawberry, this one's for cookies and cream. And our scale is from zero to five, and it's telling us the number of children. So the title is Favorite Ice Cream Flavors. These are the bar labels. This is the scale, and that's the scale label. So how many children chose chocolate? We go to the chocolate, we follow the bar, and we look down to the scale and see it's three. Three children chose chocolate. How many chose cookies and cream? We find cookies and cream, we follow the bar, we look at the scale and it says two. How many more children chose chocolate than strawberry? We look at the chocolate, it's at the three. We look at the strawberry, it's at the one. And we can count from the scale. There's a difference of one, two. Two more children chose chocolate than strawberry. And which flavor did the children choose more? Vanilla, chocolate, strawberry, or cookies and cream? We look at the graph and we look at the bar that's sticking out the most, chocolate. That's the one that's the farthest on the scale. It's at a three and the other ones are way back here, aren't they? So our answer is chocolate. Okay, we have one last one. This one's titled, What We Ate For Lunch. We can see the scale goes from zero to nine. That's the number of people. And our choices are hamburger, hot dog, tuna sandwich, or grilled cheese. And the question is, how many fewer people ate a tuna sandwich for lunch than people who ate a hamburger? We look at tuna sandwich, it stops here, we follow it to the scale, and that's a three. We look at hamburger to compare it, we follow it up, it goes to a six. This is a six, and tuna is a three. We can count from the scale, one, two, three. So we know three fewer people ate tuna than hamburgers. How many people chose hamburgers and hot dogs? We need to write our number sentence. We see the word and. It wants to know the combined number of hamburgers and hot dogs together. That means we're going to be doing an addition sentence, doesn't it? So that's going to be a plus, and then that will be an is equal to. We look at the number of hamburgers, we follow the bar, it's a six, and hot dogs, we follow the bar, it's at a four, so we're going to add six plus four. Do you know what that is equal to? Do you remember? If you said ten, you're right. That means ten people chose hamburgers and hot dogs together. We can very easily look at this bar graph and see which was chosen the most. Hamburger, it's the tallest. We can see which was chosen the fewest. It's tuna. It's down here. We can look at how tall the bars are. Our next lesson is make bar graphs. We learned how to read them in this video. Now we're going to make them in the next video. And that's lesson 10.4. You can practice this and see how well you can read bar graphs. And I hope you're doing well. I hope you have a great day. And remember, I'm proud of you. And I'll see you next time. Bye.